All right, what's going on, everybody? You're tuning in to another episode of the Music Mastery Podcast with your host, Lizzie the Gifted, where I do a brand new episode every single day, documenting my journey as an independent musician. I am so juiced for today's episode. If you're currently watching the video, you can see who we already have on here. But if you're listening to the audio, I get to get you with some anticipation. So let me just give you a little bit of background on the resume of my current guest, so this man has built up a YouTube channel with currently 387,000 subscribers. It's probably gonna go up by the time you're listening to this, but for now it's 387K. And what he does is he teaches rappers practical songwriting tips, modern music theory, social media and business training. Um, and in my opinion, this is the number one YouTube channel for learning how to rap, write lyrics, flow better, rhyme, and just find yourself as a rapper in general. He's toured the world including a tour where he went to over three continents and 15 plus countries. So when it comes to rap music, this is the guy you want to go to. So please help me in welcoming my man, Drew Morrissey, AKA how to rap Drew onto the podcast. What is going Thank on? Thank you. Thank you, man. Thanks for that intro. That's, that's dope. I, I think you hit all the uh, braggadocious points. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what right. you. Dude, I got to do my research. When I have a big guest like this, man, I got to do the research. Thank you, so, Thank you very much. Yeah, man. So let, let me ask you this. Like, the one thing I always love knowing about people mm -hmm. is like, how did you grow up? Like, how did you get into music? What was your life like as a kid? Yeah, man. Great, great question. I mean, I, you know, so I, I grew up on the East Coast. Um, you know, I say DC, but also when I was younger from age five to 15, I actually grew up in Philly. And then we didn't say that in the, uh, before. Okay. The, so, you know, age five to 15 in Philly, just a rapping, very rap, can we curse? Or how is yeah, that? oh, fuck yeah, totally. Yeah, okay, yeah, rapping at city, you know how Philly is. And so um, in that era, that was obviously like the state property, Cassidy, all that kind of stuff era. And, you know, rapping well, and, and pretty much any from Philly were just kind of, you know, inundated with that culture. So uh, right around age 14, you know, like any kid in that era, you know, I kind of grew up in the, the golden era of hip hop. Um, so, you know, Jay-Z, Nas, DMX, Eminem, like all that. And of course, at the, in hindsight, like state property and stuff like that was like a, another big thing. Uh, and that was also just the start of like internet radio slash culture. So you're, you're chasing after Cassidy tapes and all that. And I just started rapping, you know what I mean? Just started writing. I think the first rap I wrote was actually a parody. We're like trying to remix it, you know? In that era, we didn't have any kind of music education or people like yourself or, or me or whoever. So I just, just tried it. And I was fortunate enough to find like a pseudo hood record label owner who was kind of more of like a mentor type dude. And so he would guide me through in my early teens you know, he was the first one to explain songs. You got to format it in a song point. Nobody just want to hear you just spit bars all day, unless it's like a LA Leakers or something like that. Um, and he just kind of guided me through that. And I just took it more and more seriously. And it was something that I was just like, like, this is something I could get good at. Um, and yeah, so that was kind of, you know, East Coast, lucky to live in a city that it was a big thing and just obsession, you know what I mean? Teenage obsession. Uh, so that's kind of, you know, how it all started. Very cool. And so, like, you, you, you know, so you're growing up East Coast, you're getting into rap, you're starting to, you know, <clears throat> sounds like you're kind of starting to find an understanding of who you were. How did you get into, like, like, how did you get into, like, your first ever experience with, like, putting out music? Oh, that's a, that's a good one. God. I mean, mind you, like, you know, when you're 15, 16, whatever, in, in high school, especially in those eras, I would, I, I was like the first person in my area with an iMac, like the iMac that was one big computer and learned, I don't even remember what it was. We would call it Audacity now. I don't think it was literally Audacity, but like whatever the free, you know, it took me six months to learn, oh, you have to record the, the instrumental, uh, hmm. or you have to record the, the vocals separate than the instrumental. I was literally recording uh the beat into the thing like right. out of a speaker into a mic <laughs> and then <laughs> recording the vocals so <laughs> like, so um i was always releasing stuff to my little high school homies and stuff and mm -hmm. um but as far as like on a big level god i 
you know, I was I recorded a self-produced mixtape when I was probably 18 or 19, like my first year of high school and or sorry, college. And you know, I went to so the first college I went to was Morehouse in Atlanta, right, which is black HBCU. And so being a good rapper in that kind of environment, because I had spent four years, um, you know, rapping in high school out of Philly. Like, so I was like doper than most people, you know, just because I just spent more time at it. So being good in that environment was really helpful. And I would get these young cats who were like, their parents were rich or whatever, and they would just pay for my studio time. And so I did a whole mixtape. Uh, my friend, who's still my friend to this day, mm -hmm. uh, like wanted to be my manager. And he uh, okay. paid for my studio time, and then we did a mixtape that way, you know. So that was probably the first. I don't know if that answers the question, but yeah. So that so so it was that it was at Morehouse. Yeah, like like I said, in a way that it was like meant to generate a buzz, not like a high schooler, like mm -hmm. hey, I be I rap, you know, but actually something that was meant to do something uh, for the career. Cool. Um, what about like when you went and did that uh, that thing Echo Boom? Like, what was that all about? Oh yeah, yeah. So that was so. What happened was after I did a couple of years at Morehouse, and you know, I just I was not mentally engaged, you know, uh, like a lot of us, right? Um, so I, I went back home to DC, and then some kids I went to high school with were they were playing live instruments. They had like the one dude who played the guitar real well, and then another dude who was a rap producer. And then mm -hmm. they were they were um, having the, the guitarist uh, play their, his like licks or whatever and then make rap beats. And I was kind of known as like one of those rappers from that high school. And remember, this is before what we call like, you know, now modern producers, your producer, right? Like there are entire um, producer units that just send quote unquote samples, but they're like original, right? Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of like the best example of that. Cymatics does that. Cymatics. Um, whoever works with murder beats, like the, I think they're German dudes, not Cubics or something, but you know what I'm talking about there where it's like, instead of having a sample, you have to clear, there are people that just literally play the guitar, a guitar licked it, murder beats Got or whatever. It. Um, so that was before that. And I was like, I was like, dog, we could not have to get sample clearances and this guitarist could just play. Uh. So we, we started doing that live music i also love like rock music so i love the beatles a lot of uk stuff zeppelin and so i was really into that and then echo boom was a like a rap type band you know again that was just that era so like gym class heroes type stuff cool and i was a rapper and uh you know we released a couple albums and that's that's where we did our first national tour so that was when i got used to touring uh, but that was that was just in the u.s you know? So you tour, you toured with Echo Boom in the U.S. Yeah, 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 for sure. I mean, it was it was a classic, uh, you know, uh, self-funded in the in the RV kind of, you know. Um, but yeah, we did it, and it was amazing. Like, it was just the best thing ever. You know what I mean? It's nothing like right. being young and just being with your homies, making music, chasing girls, and just being wild. And, yeah, uh, no, yeah. no doubt. That's amazing. Okay, and then so later you went and did this thing called Diary of a Made Man. Like, what is that? Okay, so that was that was much later. So that was that was after How to Rap was already a thing. Oh, okay. Um, and that was a friend of mine, basically made a made a, a gang of money in in cryptocurrency, which like everybody <laughs> kind of knows about. But he was like one of the guys that you know, and and he he asked me write a theme song for him because he was like he called me he's like i made like four million dollars in the last month i'm popping all this stuff that that is pretty popping yeah yeah we see there are videos you can look at look, look him up videos about his numbers and all that stuff uh so he was like make me a theme song uh and i didn't think much of it i was doing how to rap i made it pretty quick and he was like this is the greatest thing ever holy you know uh, i'll fund the video uh we you know fly you out to la blah 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 and that was the start of what became this world tour where we did 15 countries um i was performing uh for this it was basically like investment rap <laughs> and I, I, it was dope you know what i mean and, and so i was performing for these businesses uh like big heavy stuff uh as the artist and kind of making like this soundtrack to uh, the crypto boom of 2018. And so that's kind of what the, the made man thing was. <laughs> oh, shit. Like, and it was one song or was it, it was multiple songs? Well, it started with that one song, right? Um, 
and then he you know he got so into it that you know we just financed an entire album uh, over the course of the year we did the whole album while touring and you know i brought in some of the people that i'm connected with so uh perps from 808 mafia you know did like juice world's last album and stuff he's one of my best friends and and so he i can basically convince them like this is the guy that should do the album you sh he should fly him out so perps and i lived in uh, london and berlin for like two months making this album uh, we were going on the tours. Uh, so it was just this sort of world tour um, music making slash uh, and performing like experience, you know what I mean? And it was just, it was the best thing ever, you know what I mean? And, and yeah, so that's that's the overview of that. <laughs> that is so, that's such a unique experience, man. And I, I really, what caught me was when you said you you got to live in London and Berlin and, and mm -hmm. make music. Was there a certain vibe or energy with the fact that yo i'm an american guy from the east coast and i'm in berlin they you know in london with this other producer we're just straight making music international shit. i mean how did that feel to do yeah. that it was amazing bro like it's it's like it's really what you dream for you know as as a kid you know i think a lot of the up and coming artists and 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 myself when you're 14 or 15, you're, you're admiring. Yes, you want the stadiums for sure and people singing. Like, that's a big part. But also you want to do just a version of it, right? Like, you, I really want to, as a, when I was 15, I really wanted to just perform songs that I wrote that I was really proud of. I really wanted to be paid just to write raps. I really wanted to go see the world. And so it was this realization of it. And, um, you know... Uh, just as far as like what it felt like with the American vibe, like it was so dope. Like in London, you know, obviously London's really hot right now, uh, partially with the drill stuff. Um, and they've got their own wave finally, you know what I mean? Uh, if anything, we're kind of chasing them now, right? With RP Pop Smoke and then like Five Year Foreign and like, you know, UK, UK now our lingo tings and all this stuff. Um, but over there, we still, you know, are so much of, you know, there's not a single UK person who's into hip hop who doesn't have 85 rappers they grew up with and can't talk to you. They talk just like us. And so to have an American cat um, from that like East Coast, but also, you know, if you were from the West Coast or whatever, it's, they all know it. Uh, it was mm. just so amazing. All the studios were super dope and super friendly. Um, and like, you know, we, I still talk to all of them. Uh, a lot, a lot easier access over there as an American too. You stand out. They think of you as having access to to a, a certain culture. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, and so London, particularly, was super, super amazing. And then Berlin, uh, Berlin also. You know, Germany has a huge music scene. You know what I mean? Rap mm -hmm. scene. Um, so, you know, another similar thing where they're super uh, open, open-minded, and want to work with you, uh, but also have their own vibe. You know what I mean? And, it's not like you don't feel like, you know, like, oh, I got to teach you all all this. Like, oh, OK, this is this is Kanye West. You know, he's, you know, no, like they have their own stuff. So it's I'm just grateful and humbled. And it was just so dope. <laughs> you know what I mean? But dude, that's such an amazing experience. And I, and I, I think that that probably really added to your how do you say like your pedigree as somebody in the music industry? You know, like not a lot of people can say they've gone internationally done stuff. So that's cool that you have that like unique experience. Um, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It really helps. That's and it really helps with some of the tips too, for artists where it's like, you know, they, they, they think they know how prepared they are. Um, and it's like, you know, there, there's just an entire other level, you know, that you go through when you're like, yo, unless you're willing to do three songs in a studio in a foreign country in a time zone you don't know the language you don't know right after you're on you're hung over and underslept and then have to go to a show like like touring is just a whole different beast um and obviously right now with you know what going on uh it it makes it it, it touring touring seems like a distant part of the aspect of becoming an artist um but remember that 90 percent of you know your in hat in hand money is coming from shows uh, so it really helped open my eyes and give a new perspective on uh, the work ethic needed and, you know, the creative momentum needed. Because it, it is it is not easy to make three songs in one sitting when you're underslept, not in, in a foreign country. You know what I mean? That's just, it's, I don't care how long you've been rapping, you know? Right. <laughs> wow.
that's really yeah that's uh yeah that's really true huh that's so and like and what do you, when you like well so now you got me thinking about mm-hmm. talking about being prepared is there uh, other things mm-hmm. other than just like because you're talking about obviously sleep like your energy level but like mm-hmm. is there things that you know you think rappers need to do in terms of just like like with basketball like i'm a basketball player like basketball coach um you know you don't want to like if you have a game on friday you don't want to just shoot on friday like you should be shooting for months and like prepping like is there Mm -hmm. i'm sure you have answers to this is there stuff rappers can be doing that's sort of like an exercise like that for rapping yeah i mean the first thing i always say is like working blocks of time as opposed to working in a uh, spurt. So what I mean by that is it's much better to, to practice trying to write a song in a, a set period of time over okay. and over and over, write a full song rather than, okay, I gotta write a verse today. You know, if you're a brand new beginner, like if you watch my how to write for beginner stuff, I'm gonna just say, just write one verse a day because it's like, you know, you just have to get your brain used to um, writing and rapping, right? So similar to the gym, when you, if you've never worked out before, most people are going to tell you just practice form with a, a, a light weight because you, you know what I mean? You don't want to mess up your back. Uh, a, a beginner rapper just needs to practice form, so to speak. But if you're at all like over a year of rapping, uh, you need to be an expert at creating a song from scratch, you know, in a pretty quick amount of time. Um, so that would be like, you know, practice in, you know, how like you would think, again, I use the workout analogies. You think about, you think about it in terms of workouts as opposed to just I lifted biceps today and that's it. No, I think of it as a set group of exercises and that's my workout. Music got to be, in my experience, rap got to be the same way. You know, so I'd rather somebody like two every other day for three hours in that three hour block, you're going to write a song. You know, if you have a busy life schedule, take a day off and then next day, three hour block, you have to finish a song. And just doing it that way because as, as I mentioned, what happens is when you're in that book studio time, that foreign country, whatever, you're, you're time limited, you know, you're going to need to get a song out, you know, especially if somebody else is paying for it, whether that's a, a friend who just got rich or that's our label, right? Um, so your, your ability to, to produce product uh, in set expected periods of time, it's just going to do so much, it's, uh, so many wonders. Uh, so that's, I think, how people should be practicing is, is you know, I'm going to finish a song in X amount of minutes and perfect that skill because then you can never, ever have that taken away, right? You know, and I, the last thing I'll say on this is we have to remember that, you know, when I tell rappers, when, when that dream moment happens where you get to meet Pharrell or work with Ye or whoever and, or, you know, Metro Boomin just happens to be in the studio, they're going to expect that. They're going to give you a beat. They only, they themselves, are, their, studio, their uh, schedule is crazy. So if you're not used to, okay, I'm going to knock this song out in an hour, the minute I get that Metro Boomin beat, and I know Metro Boomin is only there for an hour, if, if you're not able to do that, you're going to miss the opportunity to have a Metro Boomin beat on your album. He's going to know that you ain't the real deal because this is how they all think. Like, like I said, one of my best friends, Perf Cervato at Mafia, he did Juice World's last album right before he died. And juice and, and herps. If I'm not ready, he wants me to do it in 30 minutes. You know, he'll clown me and he'll be like, "Bro, the real deal." Industry producers and they'll know you're not the real deal if you're like messing around for an hour. Oh, I need an hour to write this verse, of course. So you know, that's just the other level that you know, outside of your own ability for your own album to make it quickly, that this is what's expected at that level. The multi platinum producers they only have an hour. They only have 30 minutes. I don't know. They got to go. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's my little rant. <laughs> that's really good shit. I mean, because my, it's funny. My friend, one of my best friends and I, like, we kind of, you know, we do rap together. His name's A. Gabe. We've talked yeah. about, like, we, we realized, like, a few years into our career, we realized, like, professional producers, artists, whoever, can pull up at any time, anywhere, and do what they got to do. Like if you're a producer, like, and you need to make a beat on the spot. I mean, the real like pros go and just are like, yeah, I could just make a fire ass beat right now, you know? And same with, it's like what you're saying was same with rappers and songwriters and singers. It's like, it's like, you can't just bullshit. And it reminds me of, um, 
there's a little audio clip in the song Star 67 by Drake mm -hmm. where Lil Wayne is talking and he says, I don't know what's going on with all these singers, man. They always come to the studio. I need a beat. I need a hook. I need a situation. And then Lil Wayne's just like, you got to pull up with clips, ammo. Like, you got to be ready to go. That right there is actually exactly what you were just talking about. You have to be ready to just go at all times, you know? Right, right. Just imagine, like you were saying about basketball, like, just imagine of, you know, you get a walk a walkout practice with a, a pre-professional team and you're like, oh, you know, I, I don't practice that often, so it takes me about 20 minutes to get my shot right. Like, you know what I mean? The way it, right. or I need to stretch because I don't stretch. I don't work out. So, you know, Doc Rivers, give me some more, give me some more time. Like, it's not going to happen. So, right. That was a big wake up call, you know? Right. I mean, yeah. So, so I'm, I'm curious about something like you, you obviously seem like a very well rounded individual, right? And like, you know, I know that like you went to UCLA for a bit, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, at UCLA, funny. yeah, you got exposed to like a lot of different stuff. Like you got exposed to like, online education, social media, like a bunch of different things. Like, how are you able to take all, like, and all these experiences we've talked about, worldwide touring, making an album, stuff at UCLA that you learn, like all these different things, like how are you able to bring all those things together to build your brand and your business and like do what you do now? Uh, I mean, hey, that's great. Thank you, thank you. Um, you know, man, I mean, it's, well, first of all, like, I'm an only child. Um, Same. So that's like, oh, snap. That's crazy. Yeah, that, I wonder we're both like, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. but uh, so, you know, you know, you know, you know, personally, or any, any only children listening or watching, like, because we don't have brothers, sisters, like, we just fill our time. We've gotten good over the years in, in the youth with filling our time. So a lot of the things that I've been able to do over the years is just, I just, in some ways, you know, and I don't know if you feel this way too, but I just have more time than a lot of people. I never as a child had to play with anybody. Uh, and now I'm kind of used to living alone. So um, I think that those, like those, that multifaceted thing was also just, uh, you know, um, kind of luck, luck of the draw on that. You know, there are downsides too, but do you, do you feel the same way? Well, I mean, the way I feel about it is like, yeah, I mean, it definitely made me more of like an individualist person, you know, like, this pandemic has not been that bad for me because I've always been like alone in a way, not in a bad way. Um, I'm definitely super close with my parents. So, you know, I kind of just feel like the way it is for me is like, I don't really deeply care about anybody except for my mom and dad. There's really nobody else that really comes around that I would truly like, and the fans I don't and know. everybody listening. <laughs> no, I mean, shout out to the fans, of course. But I mean, at a deep level okay. of like, of like, dude, they know what it is. Dude, my fucking listeners know I shoot straight from the hip. I just mean from like, right. the fact is the most important people in my life are my mom and dad. Like, I don't have brothers, sisters. You know what right. I mean? Obviously, totally. the people who fucking support me, like, they know what the fuck it is. Like, I love those people. But do you get what I mean? It's like people for sure, come around, for sure, for you know. Me. So, I mean, yeah, yeah it's I like, just, it's easy. Yeah. I think it's like, we know how to, we know, we know we'll be okay, quote unquote, just in the sense of like, because we're right. not, we're not uh, attached as much to other people other than like you said, parents. So it makes it easier in these situations like this year or, um, or even just like going through like, the experiences of being like social media and having to figure this all out, you know, I see how, how much you hustle and how much you know, I've had to do to just make a YouTube from scratch. Like, you know, I don't know if I had a sister or brother who always had a comment, either good or bad, if I would have been able to do some of these things or even just move around and like end up in California. So, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, the well-rounded thing is, is, is the nature. I mean, I, same with you, right? Like you, you rap, you produce, you do social media, you help, you coach, you do podcasts yeah. now, like, like we very similar where it's just like we're filling gap we can fill gaps quicker because there isn't that you know siblings are amazing of course but and i many times wish i had one but they also um they also right they also um can just limit you in a way let's keep it real so um, you never know yeah. i mean well yeah i mean i'm sure that both of us growing up like if we had siblings it would have probably been a very positive impact on us but 
for sure. You know, um, you really just never know. I've always thought about that. Like, if I had a brother or sister, like, what if they got into like drugs and shit, and like they became like a super negative impact on my life that wouldn't yeah. have even been there? I mean, we would have turned out fine, you and I. You know, we would have fought through. I'm just saying, like, you know, you just got to be grateful for the hand you were dealt. Yeah, for sure. You, you exploit exploit whatever situation you got. Again, like the, yeah. the lockdown, same thing. It's like there's there's um there's things to be exploited. There's tons of bad stuff, but there's also uh tons of opportunity. So yeah, I mean, um yeah, anyway, yeah. I don't know. No, and, and you know what's interesting too is like really what's got me thinking this has got me thinking about is preparation. It it I don't know, that theme just keeps coming up with this interview because you've talked about mm -hmm from the smallest things such as prepping to be in the studio and just kind of always being on your game as a rapper. But it also is kind of like with the pandemic, like, cause a lot of shit got shut down and a lot of things changed. And mm -hmm. so for people who didn't either have something going on before, or they didn't have good habits, you know, mm -hmm. the pandemic could have been a really big shock to people. And I'm very empathetic to people and myself. It was hard for me too at first, you know, cause I'm like originally an artist, a rapper. And I was like, huh, I'm not going to do any shows this year. Like I did one show right before it all went down. And then I was like, oh my God, like I'm not doing shows this year. Maybe I should focus on producing. So I switched. So what mm -hmm. do you think? Like, you know, prep preparation is just always something important. I mean, what can you say about preparation in terms of big picture stuff? Yeah. I mean, um, you know, preparation, you use the word is, is a result of habits. And, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes I like to use the word routine a little better. That was a word that like one of my like mentor types, he uses that word, which some kind, sometimes can be a little less, let's say imposing than, than habits, right? Habits, you know, habits have negative connotation. So cigarette mm -hmm. habit, drinking habit, um, right? Um, or they could be positive, which it seems like a lot of work. Like, oh, I have to be in the habit of, you know, cleaning my house and whatever. Um, so I, sometimes I like the, the word routine. And preparation is a, is a matter of routine, right? Most days, most successful people, most successful days look roughly the same. You know what I mean? It's mostly, if we're talking about the music example, you know, you're, you're, we mentioned producers or high level artists. You know, you go to the studio, a big level studio, it's mostly the same. It's mostly the producers on the side, the engineers sitting there quietly, the artist is pacing, right? If it's the rap game, there's usually weed being passed around, uh, whatever, there might be some hangers on, but it's just mm. over and over and over and over again. You know what I mean? It's like, I, you know, not to be cliche, but it's like success is earned and re-earned. And so, um, you know, being prepared, um, in the case of like a, a lockdown or an epidemic or something, if if somebody had been doing that block time thing we were talking about, right? As far as their their songwriting, then all they know is now I have more blocks to do, right? Um, right. You know, I'm sure you. I know how hard you also on Instagram. Like, I'm sure you have a routine in how you release videos, how you write. Yeah. And the biggest thing for me is, like, here's another way of thinking about this is that I'm lazy like everybody else and I don't like doing things I don't like to do. But the right. more I do something, the less annoying it is, frankly. So another reason I do things like block out my time for songwriting or have a routine for how to make YouTube videos, right? And stuff like that. It's because after doing it five times, it's not as annoying. Like, you know what I mean? If I haven't made a right. YouTube video in, in a month, it's annoying because I'm not, I'm not in the routine habit of it. If I haven't written a rap in three weeks, it's hard. It's like, it feels bad. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah, uh, much better, like that preparation routine. It's also just so that it doesn't feel as, as weird. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Yeah. Like that's some real ass shit. I mean, wow. That's super real. That's very pertinent to like just my life. Cause you know, like I do <clears throat> all these different things. But the reason I do all these different things is not really like, it's not really out of desire as much as it is. I just felt like it was a necessity for me, especially with the like producing my own music thing. I didn't do that because I really wanted to. I did it because I was like, I just was like, I don't really see myself like being able to afford exclusive beats if I want to put out a song once a week or once a month. So I did it because of that. And so like, 
my routine's constantly changing because I keep trying to find new ways to achieve my goals. And that's kind of been one of my, my biggest um, flaws is, is I'm just like, let me try Mm. to find a routine that like everything that I do, I know for a fact is going to get me a result. So like Mm -hmm. podcast was the one first thing that happened to me where I was like, I'm going to do a new podcast every day for a year. Like, I don't exactly know the end goal to it. I just know for a fact I'll build connections, build networking, build a platform and help people. Like I know it's going to do something good. So I just do that. Like that's the one super solid part of my routine. And other than that, there's a lot of things that are variables that I'm still super unsure of. So Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people could feel that you know, because they've either been in that place or they're in it right now. What can you say to like me and like all the other people who feel like, yo, like what are the things, like what are the actions that I can actually take? They're actually going to get me to that next place. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, I love, I love the podcast every day thing. Um, that's dope for me. You know, first thing is, and definitely check out this book. Um, five second rule, the five second rule by Mel Robbins. Um, awesome self-improvement book um and no fluff not no you know believe in yourself not no motivational video on youtube right like this is a real life book um and what it taught me is you know the minute you engage with your phone or or pretty much anything like a really good place to start is your relationship with your phone um and the first few minutes of your day so anybody listening um yourself right anybody who has the bubble notification badges on your phone on most apps you're already you're well behind the game it's just there's we just have to know i am not i know i'm not strong enough to see that little red number and not click you know so the first oh that you know what i'm talking about right like um so if you if your facebook your instagram um that's a big thing because you have to start to take basically your time back, right? Yeah. Um, and, and we're over communicated and over digitized. Now we all hear this all the time, but if the relationship between starting your day on your own time, plus um, being distanced from your phone, like that alone. So what I do is I, I spend the first two hours of every single day by myself, like, like doing, doing daily actions that, probably I don't want to do that often. So I might as well knock them out when I just wake up. Right. Um, so that could be things like freestyling in the morning. I'm not going to, even as a rapper, even as a rap coach, I'm not going to freestyle every day. If I don't have it as a like set time before I check my phone, before I, you know, look at other rappers on Instagram and start to think, Oh God, I'm not as good. Right. Phone away in my little routine in the morning just me and me knock out five minutes or whatever it is of freestyling for using music examples you know um i you know i hired somebody to for like they're cheap you can go to upwork.com get a freelancer we're talking five dollars an hour i hired somebody that every single day i get a little report of like these are the messages um from your dms your emails uh blah 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 so i'm I put a layer between myself and my professional musical life as well, so that I, when I wake up and I'm starting my day, and the first thing I do see is it's an organized way that I can, you know, get information, the clean, healthy information. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't, I don't want to leave it up to chance that I look at my Instagram again and I check another producer, rap coach, rapper, and I start to freak out and then I, I mess my stuff up. So, um, you know. This is, I could do the routine speech all day, but the main point is one of the biggest things is, you know, uh, set up a, ser- a system that your relationship with your phone is different. I would suggest turning off notifications, use airplane mode, or if you get to go real hardcore with it, like I do, I have a whole separate phone that nobody has a number to. So I use that for the first two hours. Nobody can even call me, nobody can even text me. Um, and then the second thing is knock out. The, 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 those routines of that preparation uh, in the morning before you start anything or whenever you wake up, doesn't have to be morning. Some people not morning people. Um, knock out those things you know you need to do. Are you a producer? Okay, know every time in the morning before you check the phone, before the 
make it a beat, make it a small, easy thing, make it beat in 20 minutes. Just do that every day over and over and over again. Uh, and if you do that, uh, you'll, you'll just begin to see the results. Like those, you know, those are the results you'll get. And by the way, the, the, the amount of self-confidence and belief that you'll get, you know, when you, the rest of your day, you're like, at least I made a beat today. At least I made freestyle today. Like you're gonna, you're just gonna start to, you know, chicks will notice the difference. You have more, more swag. Cause you like, right. I'm, you know how it is when you say I'm a rapper, or I'm a producer to somebody but in the back of your head. You're like, I ain't made, I ain't made a rap in three weeks. I ain't made a, mm. like, you know, there's a little bit of less confidence. Whereas when you, you say that, and you know, yeah, you know, when they ask, oh, you do that a lot? Yeah, I did that this morning. I did it yesterday, blah, 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 blah. So yeah, it just shows you're serious. Well, that, that's, that's great. And I, I agree with that. I totally am a believer of routines and blocking out time. Um, a while back, I turned like all the little red bubble and the notifications off. So uh, when someone texts me, I have to go look at my messages app yeah. to, uh, to see, like, so it won't pop up. Um, um, and my relationship with my phone, like I had to admit to myself literally last week, oh shit, I'm actually addicted to my phone. Like True. alcohol or smoking or doing cocaine. I'm addicted to the phone. And I have since been like, you need to like wean the fuck off that thing. So I, I've been, you know, similar. I don't, you know, I, I use my phone to wake up as my alarm, turn it off. And, you know, I'm out the door. I, 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 I like to go exercise because later mm -hmm. in the day, I'm not going to exercise. So, so yeah, I, it's I like whatever, whatever I'm not going to do. Right. Like that's, yeah, that's a mantra. What is, what are the things that I'm not, I'm not even going to try to lie to myself that I'm going to do X, Y, Z, but I know I need to do it. Um, and in the music case, there's usually something that we can do every day that will help improve our musical ability or a promotion. You know, there's also a lot of rappers, you know, I'm sure watch you and other folks that are already kind of dope, you know, as like a rap coach, I got a, let's say 30% of rappers that come to me are already dope. You know, some better rappers than me. And I'm like, yo, you already know how to rap, you know, but you, your promotion game is non-existent. So in their case, it might need to be like you're doing. It might need to be, I'm going to podcast every day, or it might yeah. be, I need to post three times a day. Um, but if you knock that out, first things, like it's just going to do. And like you said, it'll just, one day you'll wake up and you have 50 new colleagues 50 100 new fans like it's just they ain't, they ain't gonna be a billboard one day that you're gonna wake up to that's gonna say oh now you're popping or now you're you know i didn't you know when i before that dude invited me on that that thing when i was making that theme song i didn't think oh when i write this you know when i write this is gonna take me around the world it's just that i had made so many songs that i knew what i had to do you know and i'd followed the block system or whatever so right. you know you can't wait for the um the big day and it's not that big day that big moment it's never gonna happen you know even at the grammys you know somebody wins their first grammy they they feel like i would bet you know i won a grammy but i would assume they feel like well you know ah man finally after all this time now i gotta go to the grammy party now i gotta do they're thinking about you know the next day you know what i mean like it's never that, that arrived moment is not gonna happen like that that, that doesn't exist you know you right, uh, three hundred thousand subscribers. Like, ooh, like, I don't think that way. You know what I mean? I'm just like, damn, I could have had a million if I didn't go on that tour. Like, I think stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, totally. As dope as the tour was, so you know. Oh, dude, I feel I feel similar to that too. I mean, I wish I had done this podcast thing like way sooner. I w there's just so many things I've learned now where I'm like, oh, I wish I had done that when I was eighteen. You know, like nine right. years ago, whatever. <laughs> I'm curious about something too. Uh, so like something I've always struggled with as an artist, producer, whatever, mm -hmm. is like as much as you want to focus on your craft and as important as that really is, without exposure, promotion, marketing, whatever you want to call it, we all know what it, that means. Um, mm -hmm. It's almost, I it mean, it's not going to get you anywhere. Like most rappers will all agree, yeah, I want to make a living off my music. So like I'm the same way. I'm sure you're the same way and eventually be able to build wealth off of mm -hmm. music and not have to work a job and have a boss. So with that comes, all right, well, if I just freestyle and make songs every day, like that's great. And like you were talking about promotion game. So 
I know there's so many different ways to promote yourself. Like I'm doing the podcast every day and throwing shit up on Instagram, YouTube and, and fucking TikTok. But like, can you just kind of give your, give your advice two cents on like, how do you balance what you should really be doing to get from I'm, I'm a broke rapper to I want to make a living. Like, is there some way somehow you could bridge that gap for people? Yeah. I mean, there's a few, um, you know, even in kind of embedded in the story I told at the beginning, like there's a lesson there, which is there are ways to monetize your music that are not being mentioned um, as often as they should. In my case, and a living proof of it is songs for businesses, right? So just one really quick example would be how many people, you know, anybody listening, watching, how many businesses have you offered your services to for free, right? If your music's really that good, right? Like if you feel, you know, th that, that promotion's the only issue, how many businesses have the most disposable income, right? The fans really don't, right? Like think about it this way, like you would need a thousand true fans as the cliche goes in order to probably make in a year what, to use a cliche, like Mercedes Benz would pay you for a 20 second clip, right? Like finally the sync game is starting to finally come around online, but you know, one big thing is promotion doesn't just mean posting a lot on social media. It definitely does. And I'll cover that in a second, but promotion also just means putting yourself in front of people that are willing to come out of their pockets in order uh, to help finance that dream. Right. And so as much research as you can do and implementation around what are, what's the, What's the play I'm not seeing, right? Like it's like chess or NFL or something. Like where is the hole? Where is the scene? And there, this is the internet. This is 3 billion people on and 6 billion on the way, right? Like where are the people that are like, <laughs> shut up and take my money? And a really good example, just a practical real thing people can use is businesses. Every business has a marketing department. Investors, got like guys like my homie. Right. It's not the first time some rich person has come and hit me up asking for music. Right. And, and me just like saying like, well, this is, this is the price happens all the time. And like more people should do that. Like, yeah, I'm busy. Like I can't really do that stuff anymore. I did that five years ago, whatever. So that's one thing, right. Is, is think of promotion as a way to get yourself in front of money as, rather than just ways for people to follow you. Right. right. Um, now, the other thing I'd say is, is really actually what you're doing and what you said, like, like it, it's, it's an, it, it really is enough to implement every single day consistently for a year. Right. You know what I mean? I mean, dude, like the first time I had heard of you particularly was probably mm -hmm. a year ago and you were probably at 5k followers. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't remember how it is. You might've commented on, you know, one of the other marketing homies, uh, things, uh, whatever. I don't know. Did you win the Legion Beats thing? Like, yes, you know? I did. Okay, so that might oh, be... Oh, that's how you saw it. Okay. Right. Which the whole contest was about your promotion skills, right? So, like, boom. Um, so I say all that to say, like, like, you just showed up. Like, there's this old expression, and this... I heard this expression at the start of How to Rap, basically, when we had, like, 5,000 subs, right? Um, this is from the Obama campaign, in 2018 or 2008, where they said, you know, if you stand by the river long enough, you'll see the bodies of your en enemies floating by, right? So you have Whoa, to stand by dumb. the river. <laughs> yeah, that's just epic, right? Um, like, and I just keep that in my mind all the time where I'm just like, I'm just, I'm at the fucking trough or whatever. I'm at, I'm at the, I'm at, I'm fishing every day. Like there are going to be fish. So, um, Posting every single day is enough. Like, I'll keep it real. You know, when, when people sign up for uh, like a one-on-one -on -one session or, you know, occasionally when I'm doing group coaching, I have them fill out a survey. How long you been rapping? How many songs you write a week? Blah, 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 blah. And the, the most common answer around social media is I post less than once a week. It's by far the least, you know, that's, yeah. That, and so it's, huh. Like just being consistent puts you at, you know, a uh, higher category 
than most people. But I know this is a cliche. Like, I feel bad. I don't like to give cliche advice. Like, be consistent. No, but, but the I'll truth add to it, matter, It's fine, yeah. Yeah, yeah, please, please do. Because you're living it. Well, I just, it, it, it's like, the thing is, okay, you're so right. And like, what I've done for the past, how many years? Three years. I've been rapping for 10, but like, really, the past three years is when I was like, all right, I, I gotta get serious about this fucking business shit. Was... Mm -hmm. I just kept searching for like, I just kept asking why and just kept kind of, I almost feel like I started at the bottom with my knowledge. And as I ask why I keep climbing up, finding these answers and I'm still doing it, but it got to a point where I was like, well, what's the thing? Like, like I'm, I'm still there. What are the actions that I'm going to really take? Is it posting on Instagram every day? And like that answer 10 years or yeah, like that answer nine years ago, is different than the answer now because like mm. now Instagram is a different platform. Like now, mm. like Instagram, in my opinion, and I'm like super jaded. So take that. I'm like very anti Instagram right now because like, although I've built a following on it and like, I have an amazing audience of people. I'm not anti the people who follow me. I'm like, well, dude, the mm. platform is just like screwing up everybody's engagement. They're adding a shop thing. They're shutting hashtags down for a period of time because of the election, which makes, they're just doing all these things where I'm like, I'm not a fan of being controlled like that. And like, I love the human beings that I've been able to connect with. So I'm like, well, what is an action I could take that if I did do it every day? So like, maybe it's TikTok, but then it's like, was well, it this? Is it that? Like, so you have to set your goals. If your goal is, I want to be better at rapping, you have to freestyle every day, right? But if you also have a goal of like, I want to make a living, then maybe it's not just freestyling every day. Maybe it's like, going live on Instagram or going live on TikTok while you freestyle in the mornings. That way you're killing two birds with one stone or like you make a YouTube video out of it or something. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, yeah, totally. And it's like, and it's like make, monetize in ways that aren't like, this is one big problem with artists is that they, they, they think a lot about the only way to monetize is streams, right? There are people <laughs> that make entire, entire careers on Instagram, and I see a lot of them, that their whole business plan is just, I will convince artists to pay me X amount of dollars to stream or to get on their, their playlist. And a lot of artists will do that because they're just, well, the only way I can think of how to monetize is, is streams, right? And I mean, I'm sure, like you said, asking why, like, why, why do I believe that the only way I can monetize is streams? Why do I, why do I believe that streaming is the most profitable way to get me to full time? Why do I believe this person who only sells playlisting is an expert, right? And I think, like you said, the more and more you, you do it, why do I believe Instagram is the only way to promote? Like the more and more you, you think about that, uh, the, the the closer, like you said, you'll get to having that own original idea, you know, how to rap, like all the way back then. This is literally, you know, I learned how to play guitar by watching YouTube back in the day. We're talking early days, 2008, nine. Got pretty decent with that, I can play the guitar, right, whatever. And I thought, why, why is there no rap lessons considering that the rap is the biggest, um, you know, art uh, or like uh, genre in the world? Why is that? And you just start. So, um, yeah, no, I think asking why and and then, and then the, the follow up question to why is, of course, how, like you right. said, right? So why do I believe that the only way I can make money is streaming? Uh, and then you figure out the answer and you realize, oh, I think that because I haven't done enough research on, you know, I haven't watched enough interviews or podcasts where there, there's people who succeeded in other ways. Once you find that out, how do I succeed in the way that Beezy has? How do I succeed in the way that Drew has, right? Right. And then use your better judgment. Like, a lot of people, I think they just have to use their best judgment. If they really just, what if I was to do this for a year? Like you said, like, are you a podcast expert? Probably not. But, no, but, you're, no. like, but you're like, if, okay, the how is a podcast a day, you know? What if I do that? What would be the result? You're just using your best hey. judgment and you're already seeing results from it, you know? No, no doubt. Like, dude, the biggest thing I can say, and like now I've realized why podcasting to me is my favorite, like, because I could have picked YouTube videos. I could have mm -hmm. picked written blogs to do it too. Mm -hmm. But but 
there's something about, like I can basically be like, I can hit up anybody, Legion Beats, how to rap Drew and do some shit with you. Like I could, and I'm going to post this on YouTube, but we know that this isn't the most YouTube optimized type of video. Like if I did a YouTube video every day, this isn't, I wouldn't just interview people. I would have done, I wouldn't have thought yeah. about it. But so because of the podcast and same with blogging, would I get you to write a paragraph on my blog? Like how would I do an interview? So to me, podcasting is like, wait, this is to me the best for me because I can like, I have an excuse to hit up how to rap Drew. You know what I mean? And, and, and just be like, yo, I've done this many episodes in a row. You want to fucking, you want to fuck with me or not? Like it wasn't about like, um, it wasn't even about like a super certain end goal. I just knew that like, I have a platform to ask people to come talk to me. Cause if I, if I didn't have a pod, if I was like, yo, can we get on a phone call? You know, you'd be like, nah, bro. Like you gotta pay me for coaching, but I'm like, no, can you, you want to just hop on and be my guest? It's, 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 it's cool too. So mm, the point of what point. I'm saying is great like, point. yeah. And like the point is like the other thing that people get hung up on, and this will be the last thing I'll have you speak on and then we'll round it up is when people get to that block, right? Like the most effective things are the simplest to understand, but the hardest to execute. And it's mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. to do a podcast every day for a year, boom, there it is. There's your plan. But it's like, it's not actually easy to do it. And a lot of people would probably say, this, that, and the third, I have this, I have that, I can't do it. But I just was like, well, I don't, so I'm going to do it. What can you say in terms of the mindset blocks that people go through when it comes to actually doing the things that will help them? Yeah. I mean, this is, you know, one thing that I always keep in mind and I, I don't know how cliche it is to try to avoid the cliche, but we'll see. Is, okay. you know, the, the cliche would be the time's going to pass anyway, you know? So whether or not we like it or not, this time next year will have been a year of something happening to us, whoever's listening, right? So whether or not you do a podcast every single day, you will be one year older today, right? <laughs> and so, you know what I mean? And you will have all of the resulting consequences and benefits of that, whether that's um, a year, you're a year older, maybe you need to consider health more, um, you're, you're um, another year on and off of whatever is going on with the lockdown. So you're going to be that much more kind of in your own world, blah, blah, blah. So the real question is, how are you going to use your time? You know? Um, so I always, when people run into that block, I, I just always want to remind them, you can stay blocked and the time's still going to pass, bro. You know, you can, you can sit here. That's fine. Because no matter what you're going... I talked to my boy the other day. I was like, you know, I just, the cliche is, um, you know, I just, no decision is still a decision in, in the first place, right? You're still making your decision by having no decision. So staying blocked, you're still making the decision, right? Of what's going to happen. Uh, you know what I mean? Um, I guess the other side of that is too, it's just as like, for example, you're doing a podcast on Zoom, low touch, hitting people up. I'm going to do it very low touch, right? It's not that, it's not the big ask of a person, but it's also not a big ask of yourself. So finding a thing that you can do every day that isn't, you know, such a big ask of yourself. Yeah. Again, like we kind of started with this whole uh, talk is like knowing I'm not going to do X, Y, Z. If you had said, as you kind of hinted at, if you said to yourself, I'm going to do a hyper edited, well lit video every single day, you know, yeah. on YouTube, like, it's not gonna happen like it's just it's you know what i mean right so finding <laughs> something that you're not it's not such a big ask uh i think is is the biggest biggest aspect of it but anybody who's in a block you know you're sitting there twiddling your thumbs the time's still gonna pass right know yourself set a, a goal that you can do every day and just do that little bit that little thing and like it's gonna pass man it's still gonna have you still gonna have to wake up right it's still you're still going whatever right um yeah that's that's what i got on that <laughs> i think that dude and i've asked people stuff like and i've thought about it myself and the way you framed it the time's gonna pass anyway like that is so i don't know if you meant for it to sound great but that was i think that was a genius thing to say like honestly like that's Thank so you. true like bro tomorrow's gonna come or, i mean you know they say not to live life that way but like dude you've woken up so many days like you can kind of bet on like you're gonna go to sleep you're probably gonna wake up mm -hmm. 
like, do you want to look back on yesterday and be like, damn, I was just sitting wallowing in my own sorrow? Or do you want to say like, well, at least I made my beat or at least I freestyled or at least I did that podcast, you know? Yeah, let me add to that point. Let me add this other thing. Anything is like Denzel talk, but it's like anything you practice, you'll get good at. So I, I tell people with the writer's block or whatever, you're just getting good at procrastinating and you're just getting good at blocking, right? Again, that's sort of uh. another version. You're training your mind to give up. Like that's whether or not you think you are, you know what I mean? That's kind of tied to the, you know, so I tell people, you know, there's that old line in school where it's like, you know, procrastination, you do, you procrastinate because it works, right? We procrastinate on the paper because we've gotten good at doing all nighters, you know? Because we have gotten away with it, right? Mm -hmm. um, so when you're doing, when you're stopping and starting, or stop, 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 start, as I call it, procrastinating, letting you sit in your block, you're only getting better at that. And that's why you're so consistently stopping and starting, you know? So I always, like, that's another reason I just said it so small, is that I always just want to, the thing I do most is what I become, period, right? Like, I'm... <laughs> You could go and watch How to Rap's first videos that I made back in the UCLA days, 2014. I didn't know how to speak to a camera. I was awkward. It was weird. I just mm -hmm. made a lot of videos over time. So now I can just kind of ramble, right? You know, it's there, you know? Um, uh, yeah. I, mean, yeah. I can just keep going Dude, through the examples. That's <laughs> a fantastic. And like another great point. Anything you practice, you get good at even bad habits like to yeah. even back giving to up earlier. even yeah even quitting people are very good at quitting that's <laughs> scary if you really think like that's actually pretty scary if you think about it because it's like the i don't know the way you framed it scares me of like wow if you do that all the time you'll keep doing it even yeah. making a decision you know yeah it's so true and it, it's it's sometimes it has to be framed that way because people it's very easy for people to understand if i if i drink too much i become an alcoholic right? If I smoke too many cigarettes, I get addicted to cigarettes. But if it, people don't understand it, that's behaviorally also the same. If I quit middle of the song, I become good at quitting in the middle of the song. Right? Mm. You know, beginning rappers, the most what I call the verse two blues, a lot of people, they struggle with finishing verse two, right? Yep. And, they, and I'm always like, why do I say, Block out your time, force yourself to write a whole song because you need to get good at finish, just writing a verse too, right? But 90% yeah. of people who struggle with this, it's because it's like, dude, you're very good at giving up at the, the start of verse two. You're very good at that. You really trained yourself, <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. So, yeah. Do you, do you um, right before we go, do you have... Yeah, there was. Oh, okay. I just typed on YouTube, getting good at finishing songs, how to rap, Drew. You have a video called Learn to Rap, how to finish a verse, parentheses, tips, examples, and then the thumbnail, you're rocking a blue beanie. Is that like a good video to watch? Oh, based God. on what Because I actually I don't remember have that, that one. I, I have that problem with writing a verse too, or like something like that. And I guess you just answered it, but I'm just curious if you have like videos on your channel that I could watch. Yeah, which I, man, you know, I made so many damn videos. I don't even remember. The blue beanie, remind, that's probably an old school one. What I can do, because I need to make a video of my damn self. I struggle with all this stuff. What I'll do is I'll make my next video about that. Uh, oh, know, really? Cool. Modern, yeah, because I that that's actually perfect. I need, so I'll, I'll uh, and you can like uh, message me um, exactly maybe some of your, your issues and I'll just answer it uh, sure. in a format that's helpful to you. And then anybody who watches this, uh, interview it'll probably be the video will probably be up by that time so boom <laughs> there we yeah, go dude that would be that would be amazing i will absolutely i'll send you a message with it so yeah i mean last thing where can people find you i mean where's the best place for people to like get in contact with you or like find your content okay so easiest way of course with the content is youtube that's how to rap uh you can literally look it up like we were lucky enough to YouTube blessed us where if you just even type that keyword in, our channel comes up first. Um, but then they took away our verification button for some reason. <laughs> but it, oh, if shit, you look about a, I don't know. That's so annoying. But uh, yeah, if you look about a rap, literally the channel comes up. Um, so that's to watch the videos. The, the main page has all the playlists organized. So if you have a particular issue, go to our homepage on the YouTube and flow. We have a flow, whatever, like motivation, all that. Uh, I also have Instagram. That is a branded page. 
Uh, I do, as I mentioned, I have a team that responds to that. So if, if you hit that up, just be aware that, that that will be, you know, if you have a really, an interview or something you want to collab on, then my team will let me know. And uh, as far as to hitting me up directly, the easiest way is how to rap, spelled just like rap, uh, how to rap info at gmail.com. Uh, that's another uh, direct sort of email source. And we'll, you know, I think, I think that's how uh, you, you might have DM me. Um, I DM'd you on uh, Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, we, we do answer DMs. Um, like I said, I have a team around, so don't necessarily expect like, Hey, is this Drew? <laughs> I might have my team answer, but uh, if it's something that's really like, you know, that we can both really prosper from, then I would definitely be in contact and hit me up in the comments. I read every comment on YouTube. I read every comment on Instagram, DM, uh, all that. So. Awesome. Drew, thank you so much for coming on the show. This has been like dope for me. I've watched your stuff you. for so long. And like the fact that we were able to get connected is, uh, man, it just, it means a lot to me, man. I appreciate it. All the gems you dropped today were great. I think everybody's going to get a lot of value. And if you're listening to this or watching this, share this with a friend, like don't hold on to this for yourself because somebody else is going to want to hear the stuff that Drew dropped today. So yeah, Drew, thank you so much for, uh, for, for stopping by. Um, have Thank a great you, rest man. of your weekend and we'll talk again soon. Yeah, this made my week, man. You know, thanks. I, I, I stay seeing you grinding and it, you know, you're an expert. Like you got the personal brand game down. Like I don't, Thank you know, you. I can do it. So, you know, I follow you as well. And like, really want to, you know, we'll have to do one where I get to learn from you. <laughs> oh, you, you can have my time whenever you want, bro. Honestly, like if you ever want to do anything, like I'll do anything you need me to do. I got you. That's dope. Yeah. I would definitely follow up on that, man. You inspired me. So, you know, I got you, yes, sir. Thank you so much, Drew. I appreciate it, bro. Have an awesome rest of your day. Good luck with everything else going on. We'll talk soon. Thanks, man. All right. Talk to you All soon. Right, peace. Bye.